Sometimes we have to do a little bit of living to realize certain things. When I was a young boy, there were three channels on a black and white TV, no computers, no cell phones, no internet. Newspapers were a big deal. There were no handheld phones. Kids' play was only limited by imagination. And after school, my friends and I would play and wander around our neighborhood without one ounce of any worry. We also did a few things our parents didn't exactly approve of, but that's for another time. <laughs> During those years, however, those young years, there was a concept that many people have when they grow up that never crossed my mind as a young boy. You see, I think when we finally get enough years under our belts, something interesting happens. We find ourselves in the midst of a very special experience. And we say in our minds, I wish I could freeze this moment in time. It's so unique, so special, so wonderful. I don't want it to end. I just want to freeze it. I, I, I just, I don't want to go. I just want to stay right here. Can any of you think of any moments in your life in which you've wanted to freeze in time? I have had so many, but one I'd like to share just came to mind this week. I was in seminary in the 90s. And for three full years, a group of nearly 30 of us from very diverse backgrounds and locations sold what we had, quit jobs, packed up, moved to the rural mountains of Tennessee to attend seminary. All we knew is we were going to Episcopal Seminary. And we had no idea where we would be at the end of that three-year period. And for three years, we were off the grid, attending services two to three times a day, praying, going to classes, studying very hard, struggling with questions, big and small, debating, wondering. Some of us had children during that time. Most of us shed tears and laughter. We became very close. We also had a heck of a lot of fun together. And for us, it was a community that taught us what Christian community should look like. We also became known as a seminary class with a huge sense of humor that loved playing practical jokes on seminary and university faculty and residents of the small town, many of which are not appropriate for me to describe from the pulpit. But I will say one day, we went around this small southern town and dressed up all the lawn jockeys as Episcopal bishops. <laughs> anyway, in April of our last year, it seemed to hit us collectively. As summer was approaching, we knew the community we had created. We knew that the loving Christian sisterhood and brotherhood that was cemented, the lifelong friendships that were established, we understood with great pain that that time was about to go away. We, we knew we were headed for the trenches of parish ministry and all that means. And during that last month or so, we gathered often and with tears and smiles and hugs, and we said, can't we just freeze this time and stay put in it? But that didn't happen. We all headed out into the world. There's so many other moments I've wanted to freeze in time, having Regina say yes to marriage, the birth of our children, watching our children play outside with friends, the last day I had with my dad before he died, the last day I had with my mom before she died, standing on top of a 14er, and I won't mention the employee, but a Skiko employee one day took me on the back of a snowmobile up to Sneaky's after the mountain was closed and said, have at, have at it. I wish I could have frozen that moment in time. Celebrating communion, baptizing Peter, along with 30 lost boys from the Sudan, I could go on and on, but do you have any moments in time you wish you could just freeze and stay there? Now, I believe it's more than okay to want us to freeze moments and stay within them for a while. It's so important to cherish the true gifts of life as things change so rapidly and clearly not always for the better. The moments we want to freeze often serve as little nuggets of joy that we carry around as Life continues and losses happen and things and places we have known are no longer. And I hope we all have continual moments we want to freeze as such experiences are often life's greatest blessings. But in our faith journey, there's something else to keep in the mind in the midst of all of this. Today's reading is from John's Gospel. It's part of what it is known as Jesus' farewell words to his followers. And while there's much embedded within this part of the gospel, this is where Jesus, in essence, makes it clear that while we may want to freeze time, that that's ultimately not what life or our journey in faith is about. 
Chapters 13 to 17 of John happened on the night before he was crucified. He shares that he was going to die, but that he will overcome death. He emphatically tells his followers not to worry or to be upset. And then at the end of chapter 14, Jesus says something critical. He says, get up, let's go. It's time to leave and get out of here. Why would he say that in the midst of such an important time? What did he mean when he said, get up, let's go, it's time to leave? Well, I believe that Jesus said this because he understood his apostles and their human nature. He knew that rather than trusting what he said about the future and moving on to what is next, that they would have preferred to stay put where things were known, predictable, and safe. He understood that night that what the disciples wanted most was comfort, not the message to get up and go. Perhaps he had the sense his followers wanted to freeze time and stay. Yet on the last night of his life, Jesus said, go. You know, Jesus was always on the move, and he said go over and over and over and over. Here are some examples. In the Gospel of Mark, he said, let's go so I can preach. He said, let's go and cross the lake. He said, go home and let's tell everybody what's happened. He had sent his apostles out in pairs and said, go. He said to a man who approached him that wanted to follow him, let's get going, never look back. Near the end of his life in the Gospel of Matthew, or after his resurrection, I should say, Jesus says, go, go, go out and share the story. And what's interesting is that before Jesus walked this earth, God had the same thing to say to people. To the prophet of Jeremiah, God said, you've got to go where I'm going to show you. To Moses, he said, now get going. The beginning of the book of Joshua, God tells Joshua, cross the Jordan River. Joshua would have rather stayed on the other side of the river, I promise you. But whether in the Old Testament or the New, God continually says go, even though people resisted and hesitated to do just that. And when you study the story of God and God's people in the Bible, you will find very, very few examples of when God says freeze time, stay put, hunker down, hold on to what's been, seek security, stability, predictability, and comfort, and don't look for anything new. Throughout Scripture, God makes it clear that our faith journey is not so much about staying put as it's about getting up and going on to what's next. It's not so much about holding on to what's been as it's about letting go and allowing God to set the course. It's not so much about constancy and sameness as it's about being on the move. And Jesus made it clear that life is a Holy Spirit-led, unpredictable adventure, yet with an eternal destination that is known and certain. God wants each of us to welcome each day with a spirit of adventure, anticipating with excitement whatever it is that might be ahead. And if we're unwilling to entertain anything different or new, it's very difficult for God to shape and mold us and change us into the people he has in mind. Throughout Scripture, it's evident that God seeks to change us and transform us daily into his image. That's why in Scripture we find these words, the, sp the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you in power and you will be changed. Why Jesus said, become like a child who's ever-evolving and growing and changing. Paul wrote, don't become so well-adjusted to what you think right now. Instead, fix your attention on God and you will be changed from the inside out. As followers of Jesus, people and people who are on a journey, God asks us to continually examine what it is that we're holding on to in life, to examine our need for security, predictability, constancy, and comfort, to explore what holds us back and makes it hard for us to let go and trust him. God calls each of us to new ways of being, new ways of thinking, new ways of acting in our faith, new ways of loving. And the only way we can experience this is to untie the ropes, leave the known and safe harbor, and be willing to shove off when God asks us to. Well, earlier I spoke about the fact that many of us have had experiences or moments we have wanted to freeze in time. And as I said, I believe it's more than okay to want to freeze moments, it's to stay within them for a while. I think it's more than okay if wanting to freeze certain moments 
really has to do with gratitude and thankfulness and appreciation. And while God, while God encourages us to go, I also believe God wants and invites each of us to stop off and, and take what is right before us and celebrate and give thanks. Today we're celebrating the confirmation of some of our high school students and we're expressing with joy those who are graduating. Right, Peter? Yeah. yeah. Go Miami Hurricanes, which is where he's going. We're proud of you all. It's my prayer for each of you that you are going to have many moments in the years ahead in which you just want to freeze time. Four moments to truly take in the wonder of what's happening. That you will cherish those moments you want to freeze in time. Remember them. Learn from them. Give God thanks for them. And share them with others. Such moments that you're going to want to freeze in time will ground you, give you a foundation, and create stability when life gets hard. But always remember to get up and go into the future and not get stuck because it feels safer. I pray that God will guide each of you with strength and protection and peace when you face transitions like going off to college. And for all of us today, I believe our faith in life is about freezing moments of time and about getting up and going. Life is about both things. If all we did is live in frozen moments, our lives would be greatly diminished. We would become like static dock ships never going anywhere. On the other hand, if all we did is go, 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 go from one experience to the next without stopping and, yes, even freezing a moment in time, I believe our lives become very chaotic. So get up and go, yes, and yet treasure the moments we wish we could freeze in time. And before I close with some very brief, brief closing words, I'd like to share with you one moment I wish I could have frozen in time. <laughs> you want to stand up, Peter? That's Peter. <laughs> what a stud you were. What a cute little guy. <laughs> Don't you just want to tickle him and pinch him? <laughs> you embarrassed, Peter? Good. <laughs> so I'd like us now, as I close, to spend a few moments in prayer with God and to listen. Perhaps God is inviting you right now to get up and go with regard to some situation. Perhaps God may be saying alternatively to go ahead and free some experience you're having right now and to take it in for a moment and to savor it while it's right in front of you. So I invite us now just for a few moments to listen to what the Spirit of God might be saying to each of us about such things. <laughs>